Welcome everyone, it's Penny. In this 10 minute movement break, you are gonna be focusing on activating your core, your front, side, and back body from an upright position. Start standing tall, hands up, alternate a knee lift, tightening the front, your abdominals. Imagine a little pull down with your arms, as if you were doing a crunch on the ground. However, you're standing, keeping the crown of your head lifting up. This is a wonderful way to activate your abdominals. Standing. Think about life. You move around, you want your core firing up in an upright position. Try four more. Plant your feet, soften your knees, slide. Feeling this in your side body, the space between your ribs and your hips. So we're warming up, taking a 360 approach. You woke up the front, now you're focusing on the side, and in a second, you will focus on your back side. One more, hold it center. Now I'm gonna turn so you can see this. You can hold a chair or a wall, opposite arm, opposite leg, with the hip hinge, coming back center. Alternate sides, please join in. Opposite arm reaches, you have a long line between your feet and your fingers. This will also work on your balance. Balance definitely activates your core. You need a strong core in order to balance. Try four more. Two more. One more. And release. Shake it out. Okay, we've activated front, side, and back. If you'd like to add a dumbbell or a little resistance, you can. So walk over, get your dumbbell, or just simply place your palms together. Your dumbbell's up, knees to chest, slow, tighten. Tighten. So adding a bit of resistance. And what's nice too about standing core work is it breaks up sitting. So if you've been sitting down at the computer, this should be feeling extra fabulous. Four more like this. Plant both of your feet. Walk out a little wider. Soften, solid in your legs. We're gonna go side to side again with the weight. Starting with the weight, staying at your shoulders. It is tucked into your chest. You're feeling your side body. Now if you want, you can bring your dumbbell towards your thigh and then back to your chest. Your option. One more on each side. Now we're gonna take it to the back. I'm gonna turn to the side again. One leg at a time. You're gonna lift the other leg, take a hip hinge, keep your dumbbell very, very close to your thigh. Take your time on this one. Rooting down through the foot on the ground. Keeping your shoulders, hips, everything nice 
and level. Think of coming up slowly and down slowly. This is definitely a balanced challenge. Strengthening your back body here. Try for four more. You can make this movement small, you can make it big. Please even yourself out, even it out. Come back center. New round. Take your dumbbell up to your left armpit, ground your left foot. Right knee comes up and you're gonna wood chop down. It looks like this. Wood chop. As your right knee comes up. Ah, this feels so good. Strong core, strong midsection. Four more. Pause. Now let's switch. Put your weight into your right foot. Wood chop. Left knee comes up. Maybe a little acceleration right there. And then a pause. Breaking your momentum. Wood chop down. Lift your knee. Just a few more again. What can you tighten more in your midsection? You are in control. One more. And hold. Now you're gonna lift your right leg to the side and you're gonna do the arc with your upper body. Like this. Arcing. So now, not only are you getting your side body, you're also getting the sides of your glutes. Try four more. And one more. Nice, shake it out. Let's get the other side. Coming up, standing tall. Lift and arc. Lots of balance going on. Requiring focus. Hopefully with this focus, you're really getting a you break, right? Time for you. Time to focus in on your body. Activation. Feeling good. Two more. And release. Nice, okay, we got one more. Activating your glutes. Pretending like you're holding something. Ground one foot, press back, press back, press, press. Now, of course, you could balance or you can do a light tap down. Press back, shutting the door with your back foot. Four more. Stand tall. Switch, ground your other foot, tiptoe. Press back. And again, maybe you're balancing, maybe you're lightly tapping your moving leg down. Both are okay. Feel your glute. Just a few more. And release. Take your dumbbell, move it out of your way. Feet wide, rotate your body. How do you feel? You just did three rounds of exercises for your front, 
side and back body. All in a nice standing position. Meet back center, shoulders roll up, back and down. And I'd like you to think about maybe taking one of these sequences and adding it in to a five minute work break. So just getting up, doing something to the front, something to the side, and something to the back. Palms forward, reach up and over, stretch through your side body. And switch it out. Come back center. Take a big breath in, reach up, and exhale down. And if five minutes feels like a little too much, one minute. Just take one minute, think about tightening your abs, your side body, or again, getting your glutes going. So that is your movement challenge for your midsection. I hope that you enjoyed it, and I hope that you remember these moves and you incorporate them day to day. I'll see you soon. Hello everyone, welcome to our April All Staff Meeting. I'm Dr. Doug Metz, Chief Health Services Officer here at ASH. I'm very excited to host today's meeting, which revolves around the concept of springing into action. Today we'll focus on better mental and physical health. We have many great items on today's agenda, starting with a segment on stress management, which I'll present here in a couple minutes. Next, we'll hear from Jerome Bonham, our Chief Technology Officer, and some of our colleagues about their fitness stories. Then Kristen Bragg, Vice President of Human Resources, will re provide some HR updates. And lastly, Eric Rowe, Senior Manager of Training and Development, will give insight into our new Community Service Engagement Group. Now let's get started. Are you looking forward to another stressful, high-pressure day? When I say those words, another stressful day, what is your immediate reaction? Now for many of us, just hearing the word stress causes stress, but it doesn't need to. Let's take a few minutes together and think about our relationship with stress. Our relationship with stress. Maybe if we could see the good that stress produces and learn how to navigate its challenges, kind of like any other relationship, we would have a better healthier life experience. Let's think about this relationship in four easy to remember characteristics. Relish, respond, recharge, and repeat. So by the time we're done, hopefully you remember those four R words. Relish, respond, recharge, repeat. So what do I mean? So as we navigate work, home, travel, life, we're all going to have experiences that are overwhelming, out of our control, frustrating, fear raising, and Experiences that are empowering, encouraging, motivational, exciting. All of that is stressful. Both what we perceive as difficult and negative, as well as what we see as positive and empowering. All stressful, all affects our health. So how do we use those four concepts to relish and to respond and to recover and to repeat, to build this relationship with stress so that it's healthy and not negatively impacting our health. Let's start with the concept of relish. See, manageable amounts of stress can boost our brain power, improve our attention, focus memory. By relishing those stressful situations, perceiving them as motivational, empowering, normal, when they are, this is a healthy and something to be valued. I feel stress when I give presentations. But for me, I've come to relish that stress because it helps me focus. It helps me provide a better presentation when I'm speaking. For other folks, being in a position like this and giving a public presentation is a stressful environment they want to avoid. So clearly finding what stressful situations work and are empowering and woes that are not is clearly part of that decision process in building a relationship with stress. Further, our perception of a stressful situation has a lot to do with the impact of those experiences and what they have on our health. 
A recent paper by an expert psychology researcher at Berkeley presented, quote, if you have a positive, hopeful attitude, a self-confident sense that you can get through a rough period, you are more likely to have a healthy response than if you perceive the situation as catastrophic. I like the perspective in this quote from Albert Einstein, who said, in the middle of difficulty, there's opportunity. In both of those quotes, you sense the concept of relishing or accepting the stress, the environment that you're in, in order to respond to it effectively, which is concept number two. Once we learn to acknowledge and accept the stress that are around us, we then can respond to it appropriately. Our response to those stressful situations can have a very positive impact on us by causing increased mental focus, better memory, and energized attention. William James, renowned psychologist, said, the greatest weapon against stress is our ability to choose one thought over another. Learning to choose how we respond is important to our healthy relationship with stress. Each of us choose differently. Each of us need to learn how to choose our various options. I want to remind you that we all have access to our Healthy Roads coaching program, where we have trained and expert coaches that can help with habit development, if that's something that you could benefit from. The third component of building a relationship with stress, a healthy relationship, is learning to recharge. Following periods of difficult stress or extremely positive stress, we need to find our battery recharger. And for each of us, it's different. In my experience, many people don't even know what they need to do to recharge. Don't take enough time to find out what really works for them. So my encouragement today is as you think about this concept of building a healthy stress relationship, think about what works for you. Don't just read something and think, well, they say yoga is good for stress management, so I'm gonna do yoga. That wouldn't work for me. I would, being in a yoga class would be more stressful than doing something else. So making sure that just because somebody else does it doesn't necessarily mean it's a recharger for you. Recharging may even mean giving up the relationship with the circumstance that's causing unhealthy stress reaction. We know that's true with other relationships too. Leaving a stressful relationship is not possible often or appropriate. And that's when we really need to learn how to develop a healthy, productive relationship with stress. We will need to focus our attitude and navigate the situation with a positive and hopeful perspective, as we learned initially, to relish our experiences, no matter how complicated, difficult as they might be. To quote from William James again, tension is a habit, relaxing is a habit. Bad habits, unhealthy habits can be broken good habits can be formed. Let's remember that. We have a little more time to ourselves. We can plug in our recharger. We can build the new good habits that empower us to navigate a relationship with stress in a healthful manner. So what is the recharger that you plug into? Remembering that we're all different, don't assume your relationship needs to be like someone else's. Now, some of the well-known recharge options is the focus on fitness and exercise. That's fun and consistent. And we'll hear a little bit more about that in a few minutes from Drone Bonham and some of our colleagues. Getting good quality sleep, talking to others about the situation, even helping others through their stressful situations helps take our mind off of that difficult, stressful relationship choosing healthy food and beverage, setting boundaries within our stress relationship, learning mindfulness exercises that focus on overcoming fear, and to be okay with getting professional support when we need it to develop that relationship. And as you think about those concepts that I just talked about, you can see how there is a similarity with any other kind of relationship relative to how we approach and deal with circumstances that we might call stressful. So once we come to relish and accept our environment that may feel stressful and learn to make the best of it, once we identify 
how to respond that works best for us in a positive, healthful manner, that we can then recharge, find the appropriate and best skills to build our healthful stress relationship. We just need to learn to repeat that. Repeat what is a better relationship with the stressful environment. Practice drives improvement. If we practice these concepts, how we think, how we respond, how we recover, we will come to live them. It's not something we just do, it's something that we are. Just like any other relationship, when we have a very strong and healthy relationship with another person, we just are in that relationship and it blossoms and it grows. We don't have to think about what to do, we just do those things because they're how we live in that relationship. And that same concept as we think about how we react and respond to stressful environments is the same. So once we have thought about how to relish or accept the stressful environments that we live in, look for opportunities and positive experiences, that we think about how we respond. We respond in a healthful manner with hope and focus. And we then recharge. We take the time to find what works for us to recharge our health in order to relish the next day of living in a stressful environment. We repeat those behaviors over and over again because we know practice drives improvement. And if we practice these concepts, how we think, how we respond, how we recover, we will come to live these approaches to managing stress. It's not something we do, just like we have in any other kind of relationship. Once we have a very strong relationship with someone, we just behave in a certain way. We don't have to think about it. We just are that way. And the same is true with how we manage stress in a positive manner, is learning how to accept it, respond effectively, recharge as we need to. The idea that we can live in a positive relationship with stress takes time, just like building other strong, healthy relationships, through ups and through downs. One last thought. We often think of stress management as the solution to address stressful experiences. And I would encourage us to avoid thinking, I need to manage my stress, because you probably can't. In most situations, what happens to us is out of our control. But how we respond, how we recharge, how we react and think about that environment, we do have control over, and then it will allow us to have healthy emotional and healthy physical reaction to what we're feeling. As we build a healthy relationship with stress, let's remember the four R's again. Relish, to have a positive approach to stressful experiences, to respond, choose constructive ways to address the situations when we're in them. Third, recover, find healthy ways to recover from the situation. And four, repeat that pattern, practice what works to eliminate what doesn't so you can enjoy a positive and healthy relationship with stress. Please work to build that relationship. Does this idea seem overwhelming? Start rebuilding that relationship one small step at a time. Think about taking a step forward. I'll end my remarks with a quote from Martin Luther King, who said, you don't have to see the whole staircase. You just have to see the first step. Now I'd like to turn over the program time to Jerome Bonham. He will talk to us about some fitness ideas and some stories from some of our colleagues here at ASH. Good morning, everybody. And thank you, Dr. Matz, for those really important tips about managing stress. I think this is going to be super useful. Well, when I'm here, I'm usually here to talk about fitness. Uh, and today we're going to do something a little different still about fitness. It's not going to be my experience. It's going to be the experience of quite a few people. And um, this is going to range from starting into a fitness routine to restarting after a setback or an injury and all of that from their personal experience and their personal standpoint. Dr. Metz is going to be one of them and is going to join me again in a few minutes. But we're going to start with our colleague, Sean McRae. Hey, Sean. Hey, Andrew. Good to have you here. You're here to talk about fitness. I think you know something about it, right? 
Yeah, one of my favorite topics. Yeah, tell tell us a little bit about uh, what that what that is for you and what's that been in your life. Uh, well, I think it started young for me. I was a gymnast, um, and so that dominated my life through my middle and high school years. Uh, so I've always had kind of a a strong work ethic when it came to you know physical fitness and you know staying in shape. I think that's kind of carried through and to today. So to motivate you, you think about all those things that you're going to be able to do if you're in good enough shape, being with your family, doing the things outdoors that you, you like doing and that keeps you going. Yeah. So, yeah, what keeps me going usually is some of these goals that I've always set goals. I was a coach for Ash before I was a project manager. So I've always been organized and goal oriented and things like that. So one of the things I do in my life is find activities or event that events that are meaningful to me. You, you uh, talked earlier about ups and downs in your, in your experience and maybe getting injured and you know, it happens to everybody. What's, what's been something that's worked for you in order to get back uh, into either the same activity or, or any type of activity? Right. So my most recent injury was from skiing last year. Um, so I took a little tumble and end up, ended up tearing part of my uh, calf muscle at, at both the heel and behind the knee. So it was, it was pretty extensive. Um, so it took me about six months to get back to where I could walk without pain and then just start jogging. So I had to find ways that I could work around my injury to keep the rest of me working, but then to just keep moving. So one of the things I did was got a balance board and that started to kind of challenge um, all the small muscles and uh, tendons and ligaments in the foot ankle. Um, I, I found a lot of other ways too, just to get more. I started gardening more uh, just so I'd be outside and I'd be moving and I wouldn't get stuck on the couch things along those lines. And then of course, obviously, like I said, you know, trying to get back on the trail with my son and at the gym with my daughter and, and things like that. I heard that you joined the uh, event uh, a little while back that's called the Tough Matter. Oh yeah. Right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So t tell me in closing, what was you, the best moment of the Tough Matter? Um, I think that the best moment was just um, being able to help the others over some of the bigger obstacles. That was, that was the best part of the event for me. All right, Sean. Well, thanks a lot for sharing your experience with us. Uh, it is uh, inspiring and, and enlightening. But appreciate your time. I appreciate you, and thanks for being such a good ambassador for uh, for fitness for, with the company. Thank you, Sean. Take care. Hey, Joshua. How are you? Hi, Jerome. Nice to meet you in person. Yeah, nice to meet you. Uh, nice to meet you in person as well. Um, we're here to talk about uh, fitness and uh, fitness, something that's, I think, important for any human, not because we have to do it, but usually it's something that when we're into it, we, we have fun doing it. And uh, uh, for most people, it's something that we love to do. I'd love to understand what it is for you, what... Uh, What's that been in, in your life and uh, where, how do you have fun? Uh, so actually, I just recently got into fitness uh, a few years ago where I liked it. Uh, when I was younger, I was forced into fitness, just uh, the type of job I had. Um, but as I've gotten older, I've started to actually enjoy fitness. I started to do the Tough Mudder events and the 5Ks. It's, it's actually more rewarding than I thought it would be because... When you're younger, uh, you can do a lot more with a lot less. Is there something that got you started in, in this? Uh, or was it just you woke up morning, one morning and you realized, hey, why don't I try this? Um, I woke up one morning and realized I was a lot heavier than I used to be. So I started doing with walks with my kids and I wanted them to start being a part of my health, my health journey. So 
Uh, I would make the kids take walks with me and we would do about like first, we were supposed to start off with three miles and we ended up doing like a half a mile because it was a very, it was, we were a lot more tired than we thought. Um, and then eventually we would work together to get uh, pushed for more miles. And then after I was, I was instead of going to the gym five days a week, which I originally was my goal. I went from, I started with just two days a week and then I built from there. That's awesome. So, um, kind of building your activities around your family life as well, right? And and the, maybe getting your kids to uh, motivate you to uh, to go out there and and do something. Well, if you had to do it over again, is there something that you've learned that uh, you do and that maybe you'd recommend that others do? Uh, I would recommend patience. Um, one thing that you don't realize is that it. This is a slow process. It's a cycle. Um, so you're not going to be maybe as fast as you were, as strong as you were. And you're going to be times that you, you know, eat that extra piece of cheesecake maybe that you shouldn't. Um, but it's, it's okay to, it's okay to make mistakes and it's okay to take a break. That's fantastic. Love to, uh, to hear about your experience, Joshua. That was, uh, it was really great. Thank you for uh, being here with us and uh, sharing your experience and, and your wisdom with all of us. Thank you for having me. Hey, Chris, how are you doing? Hey, good. Thank you. Thanks for the invite. Yeah, I'm delighted to, to be here to uh, talk a little bit together about fitness. And, uh, you know, this is something that's important for companies, it's something that's important for the people we serve, uh, and I think it's something that's important for all of us. So, how how do you uh, build a routine every day, and what is it? What's your routine? You have one. So, I try to go to uh, the twenty four hour fitness. I've been a member of there for quite some time. I try to go to twenty four hour fitness. Uh, to uh, I think they have three classes a week for the aqua aqua class. So, uh, as a larger person, I uh, I, I like the uh, the less strain on my joints and being able to do that. And, um, yeah, it's just good. I've been going long enough that it's a real group activity. Everybody kind of knows each other and they really, you know, have fun with the new people. And yeah, you, and you touched on something that's, that's important for all of us is, um, getting, you know, keeping going and, and, you know, day in, day out, it's not always easy, right? You, uh, life, uh, is there to distract you from, good stuff that you, you want to do sometime. What have been some of the things that have worked out for you, um, well to, um, uh, you know, keep active and, and doing things that you like. I think I'm really motivated this year more than any to try to like get down, you know, lose some weight and take some weight off and, and get that down while is, uh, while you're still younger, even though I'm getting a little older than younger, uh, it's easier, you know, the, the, as the age, as the age comes on, it's a little bit harder too, but I added my wife to the, uh, my, uh, to the same gym so we can go exercise together, which is something we always did. It's really cool because we walk trails at the same speed. We mentioned the same thing that uh, we notice the same things as we go along. So it's good to have a, a partner you to exercise with or just to, uh, who notices they're on the same page with you. And that's always super important and, uh, and a good motivator. And that always keeps me going. Yeah, That's right. Is there a, any tip that's worked for you that you'd like to share with your Ash colleagues? Things that you think maybe you've uh, uncovered? The main thing is to get out and try. I mean, when last year when they, you know, um, I've wanted to do a Tough Mudder, just the idea sounded like, really intense and really something that was very interesting and then when ash said hey is this anyone want to do a tough mutter i didn't think like oh i'm such an agent i can't do it i was like well yeah i can get out there and try and so um yeah that's the main thing just participate and try so tell us a little bit about your experience with tough mutter did you actually end up doing it i did yes uh, so last year um ash uh, put out a message and said yeah, we need a few people. We have some, uh, um, to, we can sponsor for the Tough Mudder. 
uh, which we, they was held up in uh, Lake Elsinore, uh, close by San Diego, Southern California. And so uh, me and a few colleagues were able to participate in that. And anywhere from uh, going through, <laughs> falling into a mud hole that you didn't see because it's underwater um, and crawling, uh, still having mud on your clothes like weeks later uh, to um, getting um, getting through the ice obstacle and, uh, you know, swimming under swimming underwater and uh, ice cold water and swimming under a board. Um, yeah, it's just, you know, that was difficult. But what got what what kept me going, at least partially, uh, was um, having a colleague drop back. And even though I was like the last in line, he was right there with me. And so that was, you know, um, that was pretty awesome. So your your lessons in fitness, Chris, challenge yourself, but listen to your body and find others to enjoy the the ride to, with you, right? Sounds that's those are great. Um, those are great lessons. I really appreciate. It. Thanks for having me. Absolutely, I appreciate the chance to share. All right, thank you, Chris. Thank you. Dr. Metz, good morning. I'm delighted you could be with us uh, today to talk about fitness. Uh, I can tell for myself uh, that you've been one of the inspiration in the way that I I think about fitness. And I'd like to uh, share, uh, I'd like if you could share your, your uh, perspective on fitness with uh, the, the staff, what it is for you, what it's been, maybe when, when did you start... Um, paying attention to that or spending time exercising in your life? Well, thanks, Jerome. Good morning. It's nice to be with you. Well, that's an interesting question. When I hear the word fitness, I immediately move to, to I replace that in my head with the word sport. Um, I began exercising in uh, eighth grade when I ran on the track team at Hillcrest Middle School in Trumbull, Connecticut. Um, I didn't like track um, and quickly got into swimming and then was a competitive swimmer all through high school and all through college and also played water polo in college. Uh, that's how I put myself through college was um, on water polo scholarships. Um, and then, um, unfortunately, in the mid-90s, I had a, a brain tumor and they took that out and it affected um affected my physical status a bit. And my physician prescribed that I do exercise or fitness activities that would improve my balance. Well, one thing led to the other, and that turned into a 25-year passion for bicycling. So, uh, Do Dr. Metz, what I've always been impressed by your stories is the resilience that you've shown through not one setback, but uh, few major setbacks in your in your athletic life and um what has kept you going and wanting to come back and sometimes stronger sometime on something different but continue with the sports that uh that you like or something else thanks Jerome yeah I've been through a few major bicycling injuries as well as recovering from the brain tumor surgery that resulted in my passion for cycling that's a long and other story for another day. But what really has made me continue through each of those accidents to come back to my bicycling um, even stronger than I was before has to do with the fact that cycling has become me. It's something my uh, physician um, prescribed. He uh, wanted to see me build my balance back, which I did over time. Fitness and exercise has to be come a part of you, whatever it is you love to do, walking, running, rowing, cycling, um, yoga, whatever it is, um, once it becomes a part of you, then you miss it. You miss like missing, you know, something that's very important and you're always back trying to pursue it. And that's what always brought me back to it is just was part of me. And I just, you know, couldn't help be without my helmet on. In closing, if, um, I'm thinking about some of our colleagues who might not have found the the love for um, for a particular sport, or they are you know uh, eager to start but don't know how. What would you draw from your experience to to tell them 
uh, a few tips to get started with any type of athletic activity? That's a really good question, Jerome. Um, and because uh, not everybody has the same passion for fitness through sport like you and I do. Some folks pursue fitness because they see the health benefit of it. And I think the most important concept that we all need to think about is to take some time to pause and to figure out what's the right kind of physical activity that's best for me. Like we started that conversation a few minutes ago, it's really easy just to do something because everybody else is or because we read an article that running is good for your heart, so we're going to do it, but we hate every step. Taking the, a pause to really reflect on what would be good for me that I could really enjoy and stay with, I think is probably the, mo the one thing that we often don't do. We often just react to, I need to eat differently, I need to exercise differently, I need to do this differently without really taking a step back and thinking about how does it really connect with me, what matters for me and my schedule, my persona, and what I really love to do. Well, what great words of wisdom. And uh, we're going to uh, leave leave it here for um, this uh for, for our staff to hopefully enjoy those um, and, and think about sports and think about fitness a little bit differently. Um, I'm sure your story will inspire quite a few people to, to do that. So, well, thank you, Dr. Metz. And um, I will uh, see you in another. Uh, oh, thank you, Jerome. Pleasure to be with you and the team today. Wow. What a wealth of experience and points of view and different approaches to exercise and, and fitness. I hope this will be inspiring for you. I think uh, it was really inspiring for me to chat with Dr. Metz and with Ellison, with uh, Sean, Joshua, and Chris. And I want to thank all of them for their time. I want to thank all of you for welcoming me again to uh, this segment See you next time. And now I want to introduce Kristen for our HR segment. Thank you, Jerome. And thank you everyone for sharing your stories. That was so awesome. Hi everybody, I'm Kristen Bragg in Human Resources. And I just have a few updates for you today. So really excited to announce our upcoming Be Kind to Our Planet, Ash Earth Day 5K. And it's this weekend, start tomorrow. Uh, Earth Day, as you know, is an important day each year where we raise awareness for the importance of protecting the Earth's natural resources. And here at ASH, we love connecting our biannual 5K with Earth Day so that our donations can go to helping preserve the planet for future generations. All ASH employees, whether solo or part of a team, will have Friday, April 19th through Monday, April 22nd to complete 3.1 miles and it doesn't matter whether you run or walk it matters that you register and complete it to register you still can i know a lot of you have and thank you so much but you still can today through this monday even through the weekend so register now visit the flash or reference the email from our cto jerome not only will you receive a commemorative ash t-shirt with our beautiful 5k design i love that design and have a chance to win some cool prizes. But most importantly, for every employee who finishes the 5K, Ash will donate money to organizations that are committed to helping save our planet. Leading up to the event, we will be tracking the number of people who register on our Biometer. And during the event, the Biometer will switch over to tracking the number of people who have completed the 5K, thereby locking in Ash's donations. So cool. So be kind to our planet and don't forget to do your part this weekend. Your movement, our movement will make a difference. And now I want to talk a little bit about a new and revised community service work group. We have had community service work groups for years, I think a couple decades here at ASH, and we have really been focusing lately on how we can impact really our entire country. We have employees now in 47 states, if you can believe it. And so we want to make an impact in our communities. And so 
there's been a group of us working together as a community service work group, and we wanted to hopefully inspire you um, to get out there and help in your communities, just like we're doing with the 5K and, and having those donations. So this new work group, our mission is to create a positive impact nationwide through community outreach, advocacy, and service. And our goals are to inspire through sharing stories of volunteers from around the organization, to educate and provide resources for volunteer opportunities, and to connect employees together in local communities. And so our ASH impact, you'll want to check it out and look for updates on The Flash. We want to hear from you. So please tell us your stories of how and why you volunteer. How do you want to make an impact in your community? And do you have any ideas or resources to share? Think of how many cities we are all in, all the states that we're in. We can make a big difference if we share our stories and ideas and resources. And who knows, you might have an ASH employee that is right down the street or in your neighborhood that also wants to volunteer. And so that connection, that impact can be within ourselves at ASH and then our communities. So please share with us. We'd have a new email address, community service at ashn.com. So please, um, please engage, talk to us, give us feedback. We would love to hear from you. All right, just a reminder, switching gears, merit increases. So you all should have had your performance evaluations delivered by your managers and merit increases for employees who are eligible are effective June 28th and will be reflected on the Friday, July 12th paycheck. A reminder, ASH is implementing a four-year non-exempt hourly compensation program in which non-exempt hourly employees will be eligible for a 5% salary increase each year beginning this July, July 2024 through July 2027. And non-exempt employees must meet performance expectations by receiving an overall rating of a three or higher on the performance evaluation. And ASH's minimum hourly rate, effective July 2024, will be $15 per hour. So if you have any questions, please reach out to us in Human Resources. Happy to answer any of your questions. There's also an FAQ on Flash. All right, finally, corporate awards. It's almost here. We've been doing corporate awards for over 20 years, and it is just such a great celebration. Uh, we went through our nomination process, our voting process, and you will see winners and finalists at our May 16th All Staff that will be focused just on corporate awards. It is a nearly 30-year tradition. Categories include annual achievement, top performer, top producer, top leadership, Ash E Talent, outstanding service, and Chairman's Pursuit of Excellence. So make sure you have it marked. You should have it in your calendar and looking forward to all the corporate awards winners and finalists. All right, now I'm gonna pass it over to Eric Rowe to discuss volunteerism with a previous Volunteer of the Year Award winner from last year's corporate award, Mike Barber. Hi everyone, I'm Eric Rowe, Senior Manager of Training and Development. And thank you for allowing me the opportunity to spend a few minutes talking about a new initiative that's recently relaunched. For many of us, volunteering and doing something helpful in our communities provides a feeling of accomplishment and satisfaction. Doing something as small as helping an elderly person across the street, picking up trash in a park, delivering clothing or meals to those that may be sick, maybe even walking a neighbor's dog, or spending time at a local shelter or food bank providing food and comfort to those in need. No matter what it is, that feeling we get when we've done something special for others and the look of appreciation on the faces of those in need is something we should all experience at least once. Here at ASH, we have a community service work group. Their mission is to create a positive impact nationwide through community outreach, advocacy, and service. And while this work group has existed in the past, the current 10-member work group has revamped the focus and are eager to share what's new and upcoming with you today. Interestingly enough, each year during our corporate award season, we highlight an employee who has volunteered their time to support the community in which they live. Today, 
we have last year's Corporate Award Volunteer of the Year recipient, Mike Barber. Hi, Mike. Hey, Eric. Thanks for being with us today, and congratulations again on winning last year's Volunteer of the Year Award. Thank you, Eric. I appreciate that. You know, in an effort to better understand why volunteering is so important to you, I do have a few questions that may hopefully provide some insight for those interested in volunteering in their community. So with that, how long have you been involved in volunteer organizations? I've been involved in volunteer organizations for actually probably about five or six years here lately for two years with the American Red Cross. Fantastic. Are you doing anything specific? With the American Red Cross? I am. Right now, I'm a uh, manager, volunteer manager on the disaster action team. And so what that means is uh, I help the Red Cross recruit, train, and organize the volunteers. Uh, also hold the role of community volunteer lead uh, in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. In that role, I'm privileged to visit various organizations throughout the Dallas-Fort Worth area, promoting the Red Cross and the services we offer. That's awesome. Fantastic. And how many folks are, are generally involved in volunteering in that organization? Right now, we have a team in the Dallas-Fort Worth area of about 85 people just in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Oh, that's fantastic. And what is it about volunteering that you feel so passionate about? And how did that passion develop? You know, I believe the passion developed in my young age when I saw my grandfather working in the community and at church. I'm very passionate about volunteering because of the impact it makes on the community and those affected by disasters. And so what I didn't mention earlier is those disasters that I uh, go out on in the middle of the night and on the weekends uh, are fires, floods, tornadoes, things like that, uh, that are unexpected and that, you know, that happen and affect, and affect our clients. Fantastic. And how did you even get involved with the American Red Cross? You know, it's funny. I, I, I had time on my hands. And I just felt like I need to do something other than just watch TV when I got off work. And so I started looking at volunteer organizations. I found the Red Cross. I talked to some people that uh, volunteered and then I interviewed with the Red Cross and they accepted me. Fantastic. That's awesome. You know, stories are really important. And so do you have any stories about a volunteer experience that was especially impactful to you and your community? I do, Eric. Um, you know, as I mentioned, uh, I'm on call uh, from 6 p.m. in the evening until 6 o'clock the next morning during the week, 24 hours on the weekend. So I'm not sitting around waiting on a disaster to happen, but I'm prepared at any time to go during those hours. So one night, it's probably about 2.30, 3 o'clock in the morning, I was dispatched to an apartment fire that affected eight apartments. You can imagine waking up in the middle of the night and there's a fire and you got to get out of your house. Uh, one of the families had a child that had some developmental challenges, uh, that was taking the disaster really hard. Uh, I stopped working with the adults and I went in and talked to the parent, got her permission to talk to her daughter. And I sat down on the ground and just talked to her daughter. I gave her a Red Cross teddy bear and a coloring book and a blanket. Uh, and I just kind of talked to her. We just kind of sat there. We colored for a few minutes and, and just relaxed. Um, after that, I was working with, some, with, with another family and the child ran up to me before her family was gonna leave uh, the disaster. And she gave me a present. She gave me these two rocks. This was last year when this happened. I kept these rocks because these two rocks mean so much to me. Um, this child told me because I gave her something, she wanted to give me something. That touched my heart. And I'm a big teddy bear. And so it touched my heart. I keep these rocks and I keep these rocks for a couple of reasons because they were given to me from this child. And also, when I'm feeling down, when I'm feeling overwhelmed at work or wherever, I look at these rocks, I go, you know what? It could be a lot worse. I could be going through the same thing or it could be a lot worse. And so these rocks really uplift me and that's why I keep them. That's fantastic. That's awesome. It almost sounds like a movie. <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know, people are gonna be inspired by hearing your story and, and what you do with the American Red Cross. So what advice do you have for our ASH employees in terms of volunteering their time in their own communities? You know, I tell people all the time, my neighbors ask me, they see the Red Cross vehicle sitting in the parking lot out here and they always ask me, do you work for the Red Cross? No, I volunteer. I don't get paid a dime, but I do it because it's in my blood. It's my passion. And so I tell people that want to volunteer wherever they want to volunteer. 
uh, you know, read up on the various volunteer organizations, talk to people that 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 already volunteer with your organization or even work with your organization. Uh, decide on which one you feel like is your best fit. It may not be Red Cross. It may be Habitat for Humanity. You know, it may be Salvation Army. Uh, and then roll up your sleeves and get to work. That's that's really what I tell people. That's amazing. Great stories. And thank you. Thanks again, Mike, for all that you do. You know, the passion that you have for volunteering really shows, and we appreciate you spending some time with us today, providing insight on how a small act of kindness could potentially impact an entire community. And in the coming months, you'll begin to see a handful of tools and resources posted on how you can get involved with volunteering in your own community. You never know. With us now working throughout the country, you could link up with another Ash employee in your area and volunteer together. In addition, this work group's main goals are to inspire through stories and experiences, educate the company about upcoming volunteer opportunities, and connect employees to participate in community service activities in their local areas. So if community service, volunteering, and connecting with other Ash employees seems like something you're interested in, take a look at the resources available on Flash. Lastly, as this initiative continues to grow, your support is welcome. If you know of any volunteer or community service events in your area and would like to add that to our resource page, please send that information to communityservice at ashn.com. That's communityservice at ashn.com. And after all approvals are confirmed, the information will be uploaded to the page and others can access. Thanks again for your time. Mike, thanks again for all that you do. And now I'll pass it over to Dr. Max. Have a great day. Well, greetings again, and thank you to all the presenters. We hope the information you learned during this meeting helped guide you forward as you focus on improving your health. I'd like to wish you a great rest of your day. We'll see you next time. <music>